Okay, I think we're recording. Yes, we are. All right, let's get this in good position here. That's looking pretty good to me. All right, uh, let's start by opening up Photoshop here. Now, what I'm really going to try to do in this video is uh, I want to try without too much detail to teach a method of editing astrophotography images. And the, the, the image I'm going to be using is a nebula image. Now, for galaxies and star clusters and uh, you know other objects, this can be just a little different, but not really. It's really, what, what we're really doing is we're using the artwork of the eye. Uh, and thinking about it, what I do is sometimes I'll look at pictures from the Hubble or other pictures that have been really refined and try to see that in my picture. Uh, and then I'll, I'll uh, play around until I find uh, the settings that will give me that uh, fuzziness or nebulosity or uh, inner uh, to outer uh, layers of... Uh, all the good stuff, you know, that makes uh, that makes a detailed image with shadowing, and etc. So let's open this file up here. What I'm saying by that is the Hubble images are amazing, and this is not Hubble image uh, quality. What I'm working with here essentially is a is a one shot color camera. And uh, let me just tell you about the equipment that was taken this used to take this picture. First of all, it's a 72 uh, by 420 millimeter. Skywatcher short refracting telescope with the two inch in, uh, inlet there. Really nice little scope. And then on the end of that, uh, back focused, of course, correctly, is uh, the Orion G26 color camera, not the monochrome. So this whole tutorial is going to be about using a color dedicated astronomy camera and then being able to use Photoshop to get something that looks correct on the screen. So that's what I'm trying to trying to show you. So let's go here and open this uh, recent file here. Now, this was stacked using uh, Deep Sky Stacker, and I'm not sure if my video is even going to play correctly uh, once, I, once I get this going here. We may have a, uh, a lot of uh, skipping around, but we'll see. Uh, and you notice this picture here now has actually been opened up. And if you look, you hardly see anything. You see a star there and a there and there and there. Uh, it's just uh, quite uh, amazing. I know when I first saw this, I couldn't believe it that I took a picture. And in my astrophotography tools software out in the field with the telescope, I could at least see the picture. But once you bring it in as a FITS file, you can't see anything. It's basically a black... Uh, a picture here and uh, here it is here I'm calling it testo.tiff and it is a TIFF file that Deep St uh, Sky Stacker has made a TIFF file by um, putting together about 600 second exposures so that's uh, 10 minute exposures uh, and I think I had 12 of those uh, so I had a re really good guiding by the way and I'm getting that with PhD too and the wonderful, I can't say enough about it, especially at its price point, uh, Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. What an amazing mount that is. Uh, I'm getting about, about seven-tenths of a pixel, plus and minus on my graph. And uh, these stars are absolutely round, as you'll see, even with 10 and 12 minute exposures. So let's go up here to File, and let's open up and get started here. That's the one, and we have it open now. Okay, now let me go here, and uh, let me show the first thing here. So, if we notice here on on uh, uh, on on the upper tab here, and we see some things. The thing, one of the thing, one of the items we're going to be using the most is this image, and I'm I'm on it right there. You can see the image. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go to Image, and we're going to go to Mode, the very top one. We're going to come down here and make sure that we have 16 bits per channel selected. 
Now, sometimes, uh, and I'm not sure why, actually, uh, files will come in at 32 bits per channel. So it'll be on, you know, checked here, and you'll have to check it, and you just click that and go to 16. So that's done. And now we're going to go to Adjustments. So we're at Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Let's click that up, bring this in. And we're going to go to each individual color. So we're going to start with red. And we're going to uh, make the red level come up here just a hair here. And you start to see something right in the center of the screen. See how we're seeing that? So we want to back this down to one again. And I'm sorry, I, I did, let's say, okay, I got ahead of myself a little. So let's go back here. The first step is completed. The second step now is going to be uh, adjustments and HDR toning. Now we want to do that first. The H HDR toning has to happen first. So we'll click on that and we'll see here uh, we've got uh, local adaptation that appears. And you can see right away, this is kind of cool because b before you really do anything with this image, you can see if, whether you've got something, <laughs> you know, before you, uh, before you go too far here. Uh, and this just makes it come right up. Uh, now, if we go to Equalize Histogram, it's a very interesting one because, you know, that, that's not a bad picture right there. Uh, so you go Equalize Histogram, come up here and go Image, uh, you know, say, say OK on Equalize, and then go to Image, uh, up here on Image, and say Auto Tone, you know, and Image, uh, Auto Contrast, yeah. See if it does that, and Image, uh, Auto Color. Well, you know, see, we're, we're just not getting what we want out of this. Now, this, this uh, by the way, th this was taken with the L Extreme filter. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, the uh, hydrogen alpha and uh, oxygen, O3. So this is, is close, though. Actually, you can see the outer levels, and this is lo the Lagoon Nebula. And for those of you who knows what this looks like, uh, this is, should be redder. But you see it is has, has a red cast to it. Then we see the stars are appearing pretty nicely. But this is not really what we want. <laughs> this, this could be considered to be at least an image you could look at, right? But you wouldn't want to, you know, try to put this up on your wall. So what we're going to do is go back again. So let's head back here. Now, we can always go to Edit here and go Undo. So we're going to edit all this. Undo Contrast, Undo Auto Tone, uh, you know, Undo HDR Toning, you know. We're going to get rid of the whole thing, see. Now what we're going to do, we're going to come down here to background. See how we say background? Instead of having to run through a bunch of stuff and then go, uh-oh, you know, I screwed up, and having to come up here to your edit and edit back, 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 we are going to do the non-destructive workflow, which it's called. And we're going to come down, and we're going to go to the background here. And we're going to right-click on it. So right here I'm at my background. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to come up and say duplicate layer there. And we're going to call this, let's call this um, phase one. And with no other meaning but that we're going to start doing some editing, okay? So we're going to say okay. Now you see how this phase one is there. And phase one will now allow us to do the operations. We're going to make sure it's clicked and highlighted here. And so now the background, as it was initially, will not change. And you'll find that as we go through here, you'll see what I'm saying, why we want to do different levels. Uh, and it's essentially to be able to correct our mistakes quickly and move only one step backwards without destroying everything, if you will. That's one, one way to look at it. Okay, so let's go up here now to begin to look at this image we're going to do our adjustments. We're going to go back to our levels like we did before. And we're going to go to red. And we're going to come on one on the, on the highlights in the center. And we're simply going to come over here and move this a little bit. Now, we can see how it's coming in pretty big there. Okay. Now, a lot of people will set a black point at the beginning. I mean, it, you know, you can do that. But I found, quite honestly, that... 
it really is not important if you're using your eyes and you really have to do that. You really have to think about this. So we're going to just simply come here. We're going to move this cursor, the black point, up to about two. You get that up to about two. And we're going to move this to where we start to get some picture. You can see, you can start, start to see the picture coming in in the center. I'll back it down to about maybe 2.5, okay? And now we're going to say, okay, go back up to image again. And we're going to go back to adjustments and up to levels. And now we're going to do each of these separately. Now we're going to take the green and move it up to about 2 and down here to maybe uh, two-ish, something like that, and say OK. And uh, then the image here, we're going to come up to Adjustments, do Levels, and we're going to do Blue. Come over to about two here and come down here to about two. Okay, you see, we don't really have a whole lot of whole lot going on, but that's good. Uh, and remember, in astrophotography editing, the key thing to remember is we want to do just a little bit at a time. We don't want to go overboard. Uh, we'll bring it up slowly. So again, we're going to come up here now to image, and we're going to be doing a process uh, of levels and curves. So we're going to do curves now. That's image, adjustments, curves, which is the third one down. And then we're going to open this up. And again, we're going to go to our three colors, red. Now, you see here we've got the really, really sharp, narrow grouping. And what this is saying is that in the spectrum here, uh, the histogram, this is called a histogram, and the spectrum, all of the, all of the, the, the coloring is down very low and near black level, so that's why we're not, we're not seeing it. So we're going to stretch this. It's called stretching. I'm going to take this up, grab it about right here, and just pull it up a little, okay? Now, we don't want to pull it up too much. Maybe something like this. And I always want to take this and make sure that it's not quite up all the way, too. You keep that down to something like that at the very top. So we say, okay. And we come here to image. I'm go adjustments and we go to curves and we're going to go and do the green. Same thing, we're going to come in here, pull it up a little bit, a little bit, not go crazy. Something like that and make sure that it's not up all the way. Something along those lines, okay? We'll come over to image again. We're going to do adjustments, curves, and we're going to come in and do blue. Blue, here's our blue. And we're going to raise it up also. And it's kind of hard to see. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to have that blue line. See how it's clipping at the top? We want to make sure that these are down reasonably like that. And we also want to make sure that this is not pulled up all the way. Uh, if I can grab it correctly here. Something like that. Okay? Hit OK. Now, you can see we're starting to see some, you know, some picture here. Again, this is a pretty, you know, involved process. Uh, it, takes, it takes some... some uh, you know, some uh, patience. So I'm going to come back here now to image and we're going to go again back to levels because we were on curves. Again, we're going to be doing the curves, levels, curves, levels, over and over, back and forth. So we're going to go to levels and we're going to come in here now and move the RGB and we're going to use all of the RGBs now, all of the colors at once. Go to the center and pull this out. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of the picture to appear. Now, I want to show you something here. If we go all the way over here to where this curve is starting to expand, we see we get a real big posterization. See how see how crappy that looks? Look at that. It looks like there's only like like two or three shades there. So we want to we want to want to do that. See how see how this is more shading now. We want to make sure we don't overdo this. So we're going to come up to maybe, let's come up to about 1.9, 1. 1. 1. let's say about 1.8, 1.75. Let's try that, okay? And this is, again, this is RGB. And uh, we're going to leave the left one alone here. And we're going to say, okay. All right, let's go down back again. And as you might imagine, we are now going to go back 
and do our uh, uh, curves here. And uh, we're going to come in and keep RGB curves. And we're going to raise this up now on RGB a little higher, see? But not, see, see, we do not want that clipping to happen. See how it does that to the picture? It just blows it right out. So we're going to come up just a slight bit like this. And also we're going to take this down. See? See how that re see how that reduces the center. If you look right in the center, we want to make sure we don't blow that center out. And we're going to say, okay. Again, now we're going to go back to our adjustments and levels. And we're going to go into each one individually. Red. Come in just a little bit more, down to maybe one. And we're going to go to image adjustments levels. Come in to blue. Let's do green down to about maybe 1.4. Okay. And then now we're going to go to uh, image adjustments levels. And we're going to do blue. Blue. And... Uh, just down to maybe see if we take it too much it starts to get sort of purplish in the center we don't want that uh, maybe we do want that but I, I don't really want to see that purple like that so we're going to back it off a little to maybe about you know somewhere around 2.5 that looks about right and say okay now we're starting to see you know the nebula coming out now what about space out here and it's of course it's all space but what about all this stuff we're seeing some stars but not much we're we're kind of just working in the center so let's go up here and let's select here and we're going to do image adjustments I'm gonna do some brightness and contrast okay so image adjustments brightness and contrast this is just your standard all across the board brightness so that, you know we don't want it too bright uh, so let's go up to maybe about 15 there. Let's do a little contrast here. It's tempting to want to go all the way over, but you don't want to do that. You know, we don't want it to look posterized. We want to come back maybe up to maybe eight, seven, four, five ish. Again, this is all by eyeball. I'm looking to see that I don't have too much graininess here or too many different colors that are, are, are that become, start to look the same. Okay. So now we're going to say, okay, and now we're going to come in here to uh, the image again and going to adjustments and levels and to curves. Now we're going to leave this on RGB. Now we're going to come up here in the center of the screen. See, we were working over here. We'll come more up in the center here. I'm going to raise this up a little more here. And we start to see more detail here. But we're going to come around like this, okay? And see if we can, you know, make this look the best we possibly can. Now, see, you can move it sideways like this. And it looks like, to me, we don't want it to get too white in the center. That's just what it's doing. So we're going to raise this up. And again, we're going to take this down a little bit, just slightly, like this. And we're trying to make this just as nice as we can make it. We're seeing more shadowing uh, up in here. You can see the shadowing here. Now here's a really cool thing I'm going to show you. So what if you want to see that color right there? You see how it has a dropper and I get the dropper from right here. Just click on it right there. Now I take this dropper over to right there and we hit the control and dropper and look what it does. You see what it did? It put a it put a, a a symbol on here, so I can tell if I want to raise that up now. I come over and make a couple dots on each side, and I can literally raise that up a little bit to bring that out more. You see how it's doing that? Now this is an exaggeration. We we wouldn't want to make it look like that, but you know maybe we want to make it look a little bit like that. Let's just see what let's see what this does. You know, if we try to reduce it, it starts to look posterized. Uh, again, we don't want posterization. We want up just a hair, maybe. Maybe something like that. I don't know. It looks pretty good. And so we'll keep that like that. So remember that eyedropper is really a special uh, tool that you can, you can use to, uh, to zero in on that. So now, let's uh, do something pretty uh, radical here. We are going to try to use this lasso tool and you can get yourself in trouble with this but we're going to go to the lasso tool right here and we're going to click on it and get lasso tool and we're going to come on here and, and we're going to come in and view this and view zoom in 
Okay, zoom in, view, view, zoom in. Okay, it's already looking pretty good. Uh, you can see how we got the clouds nebulosity going on, the curving of the different objects here, uh, different parts of the object. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're going to kind of lasso this thing pretty close around it, you know. I'm going to try to follow it as good as we can, you know, something like this, you know. And what we're trying to do is, is, is we're trying to not change the image. So we want to get pretty close to it, but not too close, like this, okay? Connects it together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and introduce a new feature here. I'm going to view and go out again. Zoom out, view, and zoom out. Actually, let's just do view and um, fit on screen, okay? And so now we're going to come in here and do a select, and we're going to do inverse, okay? Select inverse. Now, see what that does? It puts ant lines around the outside. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to affect this part, not this part. You see what I'm saying? We're going to be affecting the part between this line and this line, wherever it is in the area there, which will be, in this case, outside the nebulosity of the Lagoon Nebula proper. So we're going to come up here now, and let's try to do an image adjustment. Now, this is really experimental right now. We're going to go to Curves, keep it on RGB, and we're going to see what happens when we raise it a little. What are, what are we getting? Ah, look at that. We're starting to get some stars in the picture. Now, if we go all the way out here, we're just seeing noise, you know, in the picture. And even though we've stacked this image, this is essentially, a lot of this is noise. Uh, see, you can see a lot of noise appearing right around. So we would never want to do that. So we want to come again and just raise this a little. Uh, maybe up more toward the top, more to the bottom. Let's just take a look. So we want to raise it maybe something something along those lines right there. And it's starting to give some color to the stars. You notice, see, there's, there's that red right there. See the red one that's coming out? We see some nebulosity up here coming out. Uh, some different various uh, stars that are happening. So let's leave that at RGB and say okay. Alright, now let's take the select and deselect. That's going to drop everything off. Now you see from the last one we had, we do have some stars appearing that we didn't have before. Now let's do, which we should have done already, sorry I'm jumping ahead here, but we should have already done a phase two. <laughs> so in case we would have muffed that, we'd be okay. But let's go down here, right click this, and let's do a duplicate layer. And let's come up here and let's do a phase two now, okay? And of course, why? Because if we want to change something, we can change it easily. So we right click, make sure that, left click that, make sure that's in place, okay? And just kind of stare at this thing. What, what do we want to see that we're not seeing? Well, um, we could do some, some layering here. Uh, I just don't know that it's all that necessary to do. So I'm kind of feeling pretty good about what I'm seeing right now because uh, it's very unique looking. We don't have a lot of nebulosity going on in the picture. Uh, we could try to go up here, and it depends on what you like to see. If you like to see just a uh, the edge of la, the, the Lagoon Nebula or whatever in black space, some people like that picture there. And then some people will like this. It's say uh, image adjustments, uh, curves. And then we're gonna like kind of boost everything back up, you know. See, we come out and we start to see, you know, more of this. And maybe we, what we wanna do is go just to red and, uh, you know, pull this over like this and see more of this. Well, of course, we you know wouldn't really want to do that. It's too posterized. Some people might want to drop it down even, see? So the white is more prominent because uh, we're working with red now, you see. And there's all kinds of different things you can do here. And I kind of like, the more I look at this, I kind of like to see maybe something kind of like that. Just again, you have to kind of play with it to make it make it functional maybe something like that and uh, now let's go to color balance so we're going to select and uh, sorry adjustments image adjustments and color balance okay see it right there and come in and we're going to be able to like 
look at this now. This is so powerful. We're going to be able to adjust the color balance so we can get more blue or more red. Now, of course, the blue is going to bring the center out more, and the red is going to, is going to not do that. So maybe we want to have just a little bit more red now to try to make that center just, you know, center's a little bit too, too much. Let's take it over to that side slightly. Now, over here, we can either add green or we can add cyan. It starts to look purple. So maybe we want to add just a little, maybe on the green side, but not much. And then maybe a little yellow out here. Uh, maybe a little blue. And just kind of play with it till it looks like what you want to see. It's as simple as that. And we say OK. Now, I think that that looks uh, pretty contrasty. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got a lot going on right here where it looks like we're not going to get be able to get the nebulosity back so well either because we did that, uh, that lasso earlier. Uh, so I'm thinking that probably um, we're pretty much done with that. We could try, we could try the lasso one more time here. And we could try taking this lasso around like this. Let's just try this one more time. Now what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to put a little more nebulosity, bring a little more nebulosity back, and I'm not sure if I can do it or not. But let's try it. Uh, select inverse. And that gives us all the other uh, part of space here. And it'll go to image and adjustments and uh, go to curves. And uh, let's just see what we do when we try a little red out here. Let's see if we can bring any of it back or not. See, we can, we can bring it back, but it's very posterized. You see how we already clipped it? And, and so our image is going to really start, start to look very bad if we bring that back. So it's looking like that we're pretty much not going to be able to do anything. So let's say Cancel, and let's say Select, and let's Deselect. All right? Now, I want to show this, uh, you know, again, this is a quick tutorial and this is not looking super fabulous just to be honest but at least it gives you an idea and I'm trying to give you an idea of you know for people who have never even used Photoshop you know what what do I even do here you know to get this to work so uh, you know we zoom in there and we can see we got a lot of, we got a lot of issues here first of all we, we started to pixelate this outer you see how we've done that that doesn't look very good that pixelation there on the outside but the inside is not too bad uh, so we're just going to leave it and besides we're going to say fit on screen it looks better farther back uh, you know it is what it is the stars are very round here now let's look at this stuff here and uh, let's see if we can add a plug-in now what I've done Photoshop allows plug-ins and so I have purchased a plug-in and it's a really nice plug-in and I'm going to say plugins on plugins panel and it brings it up here and on actions. And if you see what I've got here, I've got a couple. I've got Annie's Astro Actions version 7. Really nice. A really nice uh, a grouping of things you can, you can apply to the picture. And these are macros that allow you to do things all at once with a click of the button. And you sit back and let it do it. It's very, very automated. So now we come back in here to... Um, on down here we see there's another plugin I bought which is called Astronomy Tools version 1 underscore 6. Now this is really a nice uh, program. So what I'm going to do, let's try to do some light pollution removal. Let's just see what that does. So we hit on light pollution and then we go to the play uh, button and see what it does. So now it's going to ask us what we want. Well now if we use 15 pixels, look at this, it's really fuzzing out this whole Nebula, and it's essentially uh, it's a quantization here, where where it's bringing in more and more and more until only the largest things are visible. See this 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 large object here is still there. Some of this nebulosity, and it's basically fading this way too much, and all the stars are gone. So let's take the radius down to maybe five or six. See what that does. Now that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe we go out a little bit more down to about three, maybe. Let's try three. And let it, it takes a second to work. Let's go up to about six or seven. See, that's too much. 
So we want to go to maybe, uh, let's try about five. That looks pretty good to me, five. Maybe four, because it is affecting the uh, nebula as well. So let's try four, and then let's say OK. Let's just see what this does. It might end up being completely wacko, you know. Let's just say OK here for that. Let's see what it does. So you can see it's spinning there. It takes a while before it reacts. Okay, uh, that seems to have gotten rid of some of the oddness of the space part of it, but it's also made everything dimmer. So, you know, you've just kind of got to factor this stuff in as to what you want. Uh, let's go to now another one of these. Let's make another a duplicate layer, okay? And let's call this a phase three, again, so we can have a non-destructive work process here. Okay, phase three is up. So now we're going to use another plugin. I just love these plugins. And uh, just to show you here quickly as I can. Now we're going to uh, do something here, space noise reduction. And uh, I really like the space noise reduction. Let's see, let's see what it does. You give it a second to work. Okay, we're, again, we're, we're sort of cleaning up the background more and more. Now we're going to do the deep space noise reduction once, see what it does. Okay, looking better. Um, the uh, we got uh, some other things here that we could do, and uh, we're probably not going to do too much of this. I uh, just wanted to kind of show it. Um, so I think that's going to about do it for this, uh, for these plugins for right now. Now, there is something that we could try here just to show it. I want to show it. Again, this is not a perfect picture, but I'm just trying to show techniques. Uh, so we go to Select here, and we go into uh, Color Range. And this is very interesting. Now, we have this fuzziness here, and we can adjust this fuzziness so that the, the you know everything goes away in the whole screen, okay? Or we can bring it up. See, I'm bringing it over to the right. See, it's starting to show the stars. Now it's, oh, it's starting to show the center of that. And it's all in the grayscale, you see, like this, like that, and like that, and so on and so forth. So, of course, if we have the whole thing selected, it's the entire picture. You know, there's no difference. But if we want to maybe, like, locally change some things, let's try this just to see what it does. You see how I've just barely got the outside of the of the uh, Lagoon Nebula. Let's go a little more so we can see a little more of that, okay? And now what we're going to do is say OK, all right? And see how these stars are kind of twinkling around here now. So if we go up here and say Image Adjustments and let's just say Levels. And we see here we've got all the different levels of the outside of this project. Uh, that's uh, essentially the space part of the project and you can see how we can we can affect this now the bad thing about this is you can't really tell what you're doing so much until after you do it you can see see as I'm moving that how it's changing the inside of the the uh, uh, the nebula there uh, so let's put that back on one let's try this right hand side and essentially it's not really doing a whole lot there uh, and back back and forth here but if we go, let's say cancel this, and let's go up here to Image Adjustments Curves, okay? And now let's just go to, let's say, Red, okay? And we're going to just pull this up and down. Let's look and see what it's doing here. You see, it's not really affecting. This is going to be affecting 
uh, again, the star colors and, uh, and the other things. So we're going to basically cancel this. Now, now what is interesting is I'm going to take this now and I'm going to select an inverse. Okay. Let's see what difference that would have. Image, adjustments, curves. Okay, so let's let's do red. Let's come in here and see what we can do here and see what's changing. Now the interesting thing is we're able to modify uh, essentially everything but the center of the nebula. You see how see how we're doing that? The center is is not being touched. And that's because on the fuzziness we had it set to a certain position, you know. And we can do all kinds of really, really cool stuff that maybe no one's ever seen before on a picture. You know what I'm saying? Like, like something like that. That's that's bizarre. Look at the, look at the depth of that. I don't know if you'd want to go that far or not, but maybe you see something there that you like to do, and you want to you want to give it a shot. You know, some crazy thing even. Let's try that, and let's say that's the red. Now let's go over to image, and let's go to adjustments and curves and let's try blue let's see what blue will do if I if I move blue around here it doesn't really it looks like it's kind of changing the inner the inside uh, to be sort of odd either purple I don't think we really want to do that so let's cancel blue and then let's go uh, to curves again this is you know the experimenters viewpoint of of this software. So now let's tap on this about right here on green. Kind of pull it around. See, it looks like we're not really going to do what we want to do here um, with this. And maybe we would take green down more all the way. We can try that. No, we really don't like that either. So let's cancel this. But we have done a, a rather interesting thing to this nebula. We've made it look extremely odd honestly that I've never seen seen it look like that and maybe that's good maybe that's bad uh, so let's go now to uh, the select and do uh, deselect again now as a final step here um, I think we're going to uh, bend over and kiss our butts goodbye no I'm just kidding uh, we're going to uh, come up here to this star right here and we're going to do some cool thing to it now. So I have also put in a filter here, Pro Digital Software Star Spikes 4, Pro 4. I'm going to click on that and it'll raise up a screen. And then we can go over here and say hide or show. Let's say show. I'll come over to this star and make a little box around it. It says locating stars. And now we notice it's put some really cool spikes on here. And we can change the intensity of these spikes. You know, we can, uh, and actually it's shown us, um, if you notice here, it's really cool. It, you see how you see these five, four little stars beside that? We didn't even see them before. You see those? And uh, so now we're going to, uh, it could be some hot pixels, not sure. They do look uh, questionable. But we're going to come in here now and do the quantity. You know, maybe we only want, uh, uh, you know, a, a smaller number of these things. So we'll go to basic and we do quantity and we come down here and uh, let's do show and hide. So let's hide this again. And let's try to show this on another one, maybe right here or maybe uh, down here on this guy right here. And we're going to uh, do number of points here, length, makes it longer angle you know we can do lots of stuff here and it's really not having much of an effect here so far and I'm not sure why let me let me try again here uh, number of points huh well I've gotten something turned down so we can't see it apparently not sure what uh, interesting. Okay, so looks like this part of the video is gonna 
it's going to really like mess with me. I'm not sure. I've never seen it do this before. Let's just cancel this. Let's cancel. And uh, let's try it one more time here. View. And then we're going to call this one quits. Uh, we're going to go to filter uh, and pro digital software and star spikes pro 4. And now we're going to come up here and do a show on this one right there. Locating stars in image. There we go. We've got some uh, some of them showing and the number of points here we can reduce that. Now see how we can re make the points bigger or smaller. You know I kinda like four points on a star on at least one star in the picture. It kinda gives it some depth on I mean and you can go over here and you know do some more on the other ones you know if you wanna see something happen in a different place and it kinda it kinda gives it some uh, some depth, more depth than you would have uh, without it. And then you can come up and do intensity here, make them even brighter, you know, if you want to do that, or angle, make the angle a different angle, you know, around like this to zero or whatever. It's just something to play with. And uh, of course, the telescopes that do this bending and uh, these uh, spikes, um, normally, the te you know, in the past it's been the telescope that did this. So it sort, sort of looks, uh, what's that word, uh, vintage or, uh, you know, kind of takes you back to the old, to older telescopes. And uh, so it's not, it's not a bad thing to, to do. I mean, you can, you can get crazy and go overboard and spread this way out like this if you want, you know, uh, Normally, you wouldn't really want to do that. Eh, maybe you would want to do that. Intensity down a little, and maybe the length is too long, you know. Make it this way. And a spike spread, you know, maybe something like that. And then you can have the intensity again, more t intensity. And whatever you'd like to do. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. Again, the nebula didn't turn out too good. It's it's basically two colors that uh, are kind of interjected, you know. Uh, it's kind of given a sort of a, you know, whatever, uh, maybe an overdone look to it with only two colors. Uh, uh, but anyway, so we say okay when we get done with the star spikes, and it should put those in to our picture. See, we've got them there in the picture and kind of subtle around different places. And uh, then... I've done something here which is kind of cool. I just want to show it. Uh, I have a file here and uh, I go open a recent file and it's this file that has my signature on it. And I made a signature by using uh, a brush tool and uh, you know putting my signature where, where it needs to go. Uh, and so I'm going to click on this and uh, I'm going to get this signature. This is a previous version of the nebula. And uh, so I'm going to go up here to the pointer and do a control C. And then we're going to go back into the other one and go over here if we can. <laughs> and we'll see what happens here. Um, I think before we do this, uh, we're going to merge this down. Now here's, here's the thing. See, we can also do the opacity. So, so we can come over here. If we don't like this so much, what we did on that, see, we can turn it up or down. So we can say, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I like those star spikes so much. See see how I can turn them down now? So, so now watch, I'll turn them up. See how they're coming up? See that? And so I'm going to go ahead and leave them up. I like that. And I'm going to go ahead and say now, right click on this phase three, and I'm going to say merge down. So that will, that will permanentize it, if you will, into the previous phase. Now let's go on this phase. We can turn it on and off. See what we did there. Uh, well, you know, the more I look at that, I don't really like, I, I kind of like the lighter nebula better, like that one better than that. It's a little bit overdone. So we're going to take the uh, opacity here and just turn it down, see? And we can do that. We can turn it down and say, let's turn it to about maybe half of what we had, maybe 41%-ish. 
Let's try that, okay? Something like that, 41%, all right? Looks like we're losing our star spikes by doing that. In fact, let's take it down a little more, down to about maybe 34%. You see how it's reducing down to maybe 20%. All right, now let's, let's take that in now. And by taking right click and going to merge down. And what that does is it, is it finalizes it, you see, and puts it into the, everything we've done into the previous one, then we can't change it. Unless we would go up here to image or going up here to edit, undo, 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 like we were doing earlier. Okay, so now let's say, let's see what our phase one has done here. See, phase one is our biggest, our biggest change, right? We click that off, we get, we're back to ground zero again to, to starting over. So now I'm going to click on the eyeball here. You see where my cursor is, the little, little, I think it looks like an eye, and it'll bring it back. Now we're going to say, well, how much opacity uh, do we want here? Uh, uh, opacity, let's see, so you can always change that. And here's where we can really affect this way more than we ever want to, because we can go right from full black up to what we've done. And so this is where we can do our final edit. You know, if we thought it was too bright, you know, maybe maybe that looks a little nicer the more I look at it. You know, it's not as overdone looking. So we'll drop that down to maybe 86, 87%. Yeah. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come and bring the star spikes back in again, okay? Because we've lost them, you see. So I'm going to go right up in here to filter, star spikes pro four. And we come up here and we're going to do our spikes again. Show, let's just see what we can show. And we'll do a few of them. And now we've, you know, gotten the length out of control here. So we'll bring that back down again a little bit. Maybe the intensity a little bit more too. And uh, length up maybe just a hair more. And maybe we'll do it to a couple more over here, you know, just to kind of give it some, some uh, height and some, you know, something that's, uh, see, we can see, see we have added three or four together there, which is kind of cool. There's all kinds of things you can do with this uh, to achieve something. And, you know, and then you come back and say hide, you know, because maybe you really don't like that one. It got a little bit out of control. And so maybe what I want to do is I want to go just to show just the star there come in real small. See, that looks better. So you can play with that, do whatever you need to. Again, this is Star Spikes version four. Maybe one right in there. Okay, I think that's gonna about do it. So let's say okay. We should get our spikes to appear. See, they're very subdued, they look pretty good. And now we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna go and do uh, the signature now again. I'm come in here and I'm going to open up the file that has the signature on it, uh, which I have just happened to have it here, uh, right here. And now I'm going to do a control C and I'm going to go back to my other file. Okay. You're following me here and click down in the corner here, do right click or sorry, left click and then do control V and that brings the signature in to the picture. Now we can go up here and make sure we're on this tool and grab it, you see, and pull that baby down. Now you see how it's covering up the stars, see that? See, it's covering, it's because it has a bl black background. Well, we can fix that. Let's put it where you want it, maybe right there. Now we go up here to normal. You see this normal, click on this, and go down here to exclusion. And we click on the exclusion right here, and now, the stars are able to be seen behind it. You see, see that? See, I can see the star behind it. And so we put that back down where we want it, maybe something like that. And I think we're gonna call this one quits here. Let's see what this looks like. And uh, select, see I'm trying to get that. I have trouble with that sometimes and I'm gonna have it again here. There we go. There. Okay, that's about it. Uh, it looks like we've got not a bad picture. Zoom out. Not many stars in this picture. But it is a rather interesting version of the Lagoon Nebula. I hope you gained something from this. And uh, 
as always, don't give up. Uh, it's difficult. It's a difficult hobby. And have a very good evening or morning, wherever you may be in the world. And as always, clear skies.